27, the big 27. And I, and I just have to say, you see this, you see this Argentina training jersey here? It's out of date. It's no longer relevant. You know why? Yeah, it's missing uh, an extra stripe. <laughs> an extra star. Yep. It's missing I an know. extra star. I was this, you. this is outdated. You know what I'm saying? So, first of all, congratulations to Argentina, man. You know? They almost messed it up again, but they were able to pull it off. Boy, oh boy, they almost <laughs> messed it up twice in this match. So why are you the clown now, though? I'm the clown now because I used to dunk on these on the, these oh, guys okay, okay. a few His, years historically, ago. Historically, yeah, historically. Historically. Apple and now... Lina, Messi plus 10, ten other guys. Yeah. They who must but, not be named. <laughs> you know, today I was actually talking about the other guys because if he was to actually not win the World Cup, you had to blame the other guys for that. Because yeah. every time Messi did something good, set up a goal, score a goal, these other guys would just do something totally ridiculous to undo what he just did. You see what I mean? Oh, yeah. I... It looked like for a while they were going to blow this for Messi, even though he's been like pristine this whole tournament. Exactly. Um, there were some moments in an extra time, I thought, where like France was starting to like get the better of Messi here and there, like that like Kola Mwani was closing him down and yep. everything. Um, but overall, bro, like you said, shades of the Netherlands match. And not only that, but when they retook the lead in extra time, I was thinking to myself, I dare you to screw this up. And it looked like they almost did, bro. They almost did, bro. They almost did. But let's talk about this game. What we're going to do, we're going to actually dive into the third place match a bit as well. But we have to talk about the final first, man. And before we do anything, let's just click this little widget right here and have a little fireworks for Argentina. Mm -hmm. You know, pretty cool, right? Pretty, pretty cool. We do that again. Pretty, pretty cool, man. So congratulations to Argentina. 3-3 three, three after extra time. So when I check my Facebook, everyone is saying that this is the best final ever. Do you agree? I, I think it's certainly the most dramatic World Cup final I've seen in my lifetime. It's now been six or seven since 1998. Um, it's going to age really well in terms of like memorability and, and, and like end-to-end -end action and giving millions of people around the world a heart attack. <laughs> um, the the best, I have to think about it. Because, you know, these things are fresh. I still got to digest it. And the reason why I don't say yes right away is just because it was very one-sided for like the first exactly. 70 minutes. Exactly. It, this came to life. I mean, I, lo I love this match. Drama. But this came to life because Argentina allowed it to come to life. This let me let me let me let you know my fur my 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 best World Cup final. This is my best World Cup final in my opinion, right? Okay. Let's we'll just pull it up on the screen right here. This right here is my best World Cup final. This, that right Ooh. there, <laughs> that right there is my best World Cup final. And the reason why I'm going for this is because this was my first. This was my first. I watched it live, and. I didn't expect France to win it. That's the thing. Brazil was so good with the stars they had in their team. I actually didn't expect them to get beaten comprehensively by those Zidane headers. Both of those goals were from corners, weren't they? Yeah, I believe so. And then, you know, uh... and I could remember Zidane with his bald head and the ball just going off the top. It's like gliding off the top straight into the back of the net past Tafarel, and I'm like, okay, wow. And then Petit came on late and then scored that late goal. I was like, okay. Yeah, I didn't even like, remember Desai got sent off in this game. I didn't remember that. Yeah, that was also that. a final that was very one-sided, um, that France did not allow the opponent to come back in. Um, I would say my favorite final. I mean, like it could change because I when I digest this. Mm. My favorite final is two thousand six, Italy France. Well, the two thousand and six final. For this final, I think I had found myself in Saint Vincent. 
that was actually the first time I had went back home on vacation. And I think I was there, if I'm not mistaken, or might have came back already. But I could mm -hmm. remember this World Cup very, very clearly. Trezeguet missed this penalty in this in this um, shootout. We we double check. Let me see if they, they have any any evidence of that. I don't even know. But um, yeah, they, they don't have any. Yeah, they do. They they actually do. Yeah, David Trezeguet right there. David Trezeguet yeah. missed this penalty. Hit the crossbar. Yep, and that is a memory that that lives with me. But look, just to go back to this final, right? Let's get back to date. 2022 final, Argentina 3, France 3, 4-2 <laughs> after extra time. First, let's start with the starting 11s. Let me know what you think. Argentina, they made one change. They brought in Di Maria <laughs> for Leandro Paredes. What do you think about that change? I, well, when I texted you about it, uh, before the game started, um, I felt skeptical because mm. he was not getting very many many minutes in this World Cup. I was worried, you know, he's he's a, a gentleman in his mid thirties. He's uh, sometimes does not has his, his on the field play does not age as well as as the likes of Messi. But he was he was the biggest threat to France in that first half. Yeah, Angel Di Maria, all of his touches were perfect and i mean the, the jules, I was Kunde, jules Kunde is having nightmares about angel di maria right now he was he was the best player on the pitch in that in that first 45 minutes honestly yeah. your, i mean your text your text said di maria in the lineup wow and i was like yeah and when he did come off you, you said too early to bring him off now. He was amazing today. And I was like, it's over, bro. You know, yeah. so I, I, look, look, I think, you know, give it up to Scaloni as well. Before we even go further, give it up to him because he was appointed the manager out of nowhere. And a lot of people are probably skeptical. And he's had a great record since he was appointed, right? He's won them their first Copa America in 28 years. And their first World Cup in 36 years. So, Lionel Scaloni goes down already as a legend. He could, he could, he could walk away now. You see what I mean? But the yeah. thing is, the thing about walking away now that I, I, I didn't think about is Messi said that he's not going to retire because he wants to play on as the champions of the world. So, whenever he goes onto the field, you recognize him as a champion. You see what I mean? Respect that, that jersey with that that crest in the middle, world champion. So I do understand where he's coming from when it comes to that, though. But that was a masterclass move by Scaloni to play Di Maria, drop Paredes back to the bench, and to leave a ni 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 um, Nicolas Tagliafico in in the team. That was also a big call. It was. Yeah. That was a huge, huge call, and persisting with Macalista throughout the tournament. It's been a good move. And Argentina, we know they, they win it in the end, but this could have turned out, this could have backfired. You see what I mean? And at the end of the day, you would have asked, why take off Di Maria so early? Why not do this? Why not do that? Right? You see yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I thought the substitution, it was before the hour mark, I believe, too. I, I saw that. I'm like, he doesn't, he shouldn't be coming off. Because the thing yeah. with, like, the presence that he had today in, in the attack – he was so he was so suffocating that it was basically a form of defense for Argentina. Yeah, because when you take him off, it's like you're taking a foot off the gas and allowing yeah. the other the other team to catch up to you. And that's yeah. what they did. I think they went maybe defensively a bit too early when yep. they brought on Acuna. And if you take a look at a French team, do you think it was a right decision by the Shams to actually bring back Rabio and Upamecano when these players were ill and um, Ibrahim Konate had such a great game? You see what I mean? I, I can under I can understand Rabio because Rabio has been um, very instrumental, I think, in this tournament. Yeah. I have no idea as to what the exact fitness. Uh, of them heading into this game, so I know that there was there were rumors in the camp of like like sickness spreading around, like. But some people were saying, "Oh, these are just mind games for the French team." Um, 
uh, to be honest, I I don't know what kind of difference it would have made because I think Argentina were just so dominant. But look at the, talk about the formation. He went with what a four two three one there, right? Um, I I mean I I think France just didn't really know what hit, what hit them today. I don't know if it was a little bit of complacency or just the fact that Argentina were just desperate. Um, but I'm not sure the kind of impact it would have changed either way. Do you think he made a mistake? I, at the end of the day, I don't think so because that's not where they had the problem. And you saw he made two first half substitutions, which yep. is very uncharacteristic of Didier Deschamps. But you got to give him a lot of credit for what he did. He was rather, you know, proactive during the game and not too reactive because being proactive, meaning that, okay, it's a mixture of both, but still, being proactive means that you're 2 nil down and you do something about it. Being reactive would have been to basically late in the second half to bring on all attacking players and leave your other attackers on the field because now you're reacting to the, the, the reality of you being down and you haven't, you, you're you going to lose. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think he was very proactive for, to make those changes to get back in the game because after making those changes, France got right back into the game. Even though they didn't really do much in terms of trouble the 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 the, the scoreline or get into the final third to a lot they were much better than they were in in the entirety of the first half because it was just strictly argentina man and di maria you go back he was tormenting dembele and, and kunde and that that brings us to the first goal where of course Lionel messi put away the penalty in 23 minutes when this goal went in Messi stepped up, scored. Of course, it was a penalty. Dembele, very sloppy. Did you think, like, oh, boy, Argentina going to win it now? The fact that they scored first? I thought France were in trouble because um, it was. It felt like it was a matter of time before Argentina was going to break them down with all that pressure mounting. And the, the lead was deserved. And I thought that before the first half was done, we could well see them strike, find the back of the net again. And they did. I mean... They put in that was one of the best team goals of this entire World Cup. The way they won the ball, the ball back down you the mean, middle. Stretch. You mean the you mean the second goal, right? The second goal, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The second goal. The when second the, goal was brilliant. It one hundred percent when they won the ball back in transition and they, and they pounced quickly. Man, those like three, four touches, and then Di Maria, uh, Di Maria slotting at home, like whew, they were on fire at that point. And I think for France. I don't, I'm actually not going to give France too much credit because even the first 20 minutes of the second half, Argentina was still dictating the tempo, I felt like. True, true. And what changed things was I think they panicked when they gave up that penalty. And France pulled one back. And Ooh, they, Argentina? Argentina, yeah. And they kind of reverted back to what we saw, you and I mentioned before the stream started, the, the Netherlands match. But they've been doing this. They've been doing this. And I think this is something that they have to try to get out of their game, though, because they've been dominating games. And then when you get to the latter stages, the last 15 minutes, they get very, very um, scared, it seems. You know, they get very nervous and, you know, they, they, they get an anxiety. I don't know where this anxiety comes from, but it seems like, you know, they, they just switch off. And Messi's face, when the second goal went in, he was like, it's like he said, what the hell? You know what I'm saying? W what is going on here? Because, you know, and, and credit to the Shams too, because he took off, he took off Griezmann. He made the first substitutions he made when he took off, um, he took off both Giroud and Dembele because these guys wasn't effective. They were helping out enough in the back and they weren't doing anything going forward. So that was a big call. But the second half, though, when he took off Tio Hernandez and Griezmann, that was a big call. When he brought on Colomuani, and um, Colomuani came on in the second half, didn't he? Or, or was he the first half sub? I, um, 
I know Giroud was taken off towards the end of the first half. Um, yeah, the, the first half subs. Let's go back to the first half subs. The first half subs were um, okay. This was the first half subs. Turam came on. Oh, and Kolomwani. These guys, I think, changed the game. These guys added a lot of impetus to the game. For sure. But in the second half now, when the changes were made right here, when Kamavinga and who else came on? Let me go down. Kingsley Coman. These two players came on. Changed the game again. That put France in the driver's seat. It's like Argentina was like, it's like they give up the wheel. It's like you say, Jesus, take the wheel. They said, France, take the wheel now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I dare you to, I dare you to come back. And they did. I, I, I couldn't believe, listen, bro, I couldn't believe what I was watching. I literally, like, came downstairs and went live. I think just as France had got the penalty, but Argentina was still 2-1. And... Bro, Colomuani he got past um Otamendi. This guy is this guy's this guy is one to watch because this is his breakout season for Frankfurt. He's been good, he's been scoring goals, and it was a good call that Bishops made to, to pick him for the national team, you know, and not go for like Gignac or <laughs> one of them, you know what I'm saying? Because look, man. Good getting away from Otamendi, Mbappe stepping up to score. But the second goal, the second goal, that was nasty, bro. Yeah, it was. That was nasty. Two Ram and Mbappe, that was like a, one of those goals that I scored FIFA all the time. When I lobbed the ball over the freaking defenders, made, made the striker run through. That and was The finish, oh my God. The, the, the one touch Mbappe gets on to control it. Before uh, finishing it the way that he did, that it was that was excellent, and it, it came one minute and thirty three seconds after the penalty. It was ridiculous, bro. And he all was, of a sudden, it looked like okay, Argentina's gonna. It went from going from Argentina's gonna close this game out, that's gotta see it through to oh my god, are they gonna actually lose in regular time now? Exactly. Did because, you see what did you see what Peter Crouch said about that goal? No. All right, so Peter Crouch said this about the goal. He said... The second one. Yeah, the Mbappe goal. He said, incredible from Mbappe. I was doing this shit in 2006. Look at him. Oh, my God. Yeah, Peter Crouch, man. So lanky and weird, right? <laughs> Crazy. But, yeah, so that was, that was a really good goal. I ain't going to lie, though. That was magnificent. And to come back in the game, France looked like they were going to win it, as you said. Yeah. I was like, I can't believe what I cannot believe Argentina. Up until that moment when Mbappe scored, France had four shots, four shots at goal, right? Four minutes prior, they, they had none. Zero. Yep. None. Literally Zero. none. No shots at goal, none on target. They, it, I was beginning to prepare myself for a review to say Argentina comprehensively, comprehensively beat France in this final one-sided one-sided it was listen it, it was a mirror image of the netherlands game yes literally and the, and the australia game yeah both games it just so happened that they didn't concede the second against australia and they actually won on penalties this was a mirror image of the the netherlands game with the exception of the goals in extra time but look the game went into extra time and Argentina would take the lead. Lataro, his shot saved, Messi to put in. And you saw there was that, that, that race, golden boot race between Messi and Mbappe. Messi, yep. he was ahead first when he scored that 23rd minute goal. Then Mbappe, when he scored that brace, he overtook him and went up to seven. And Messi was actually on, um, well, he, he, Messi was on, yeah, Messi was on. Messi was on six. Mbappe did go to six, then go, went to seven. Then Messi went to, to, to seven, right? To Messi went to Mbappe. seven. Yeah. yeah. He went to then, seven, but he was, was leading. Like, and I was like, these guys are going to share the golden boot. But it was crazy how Messi scored that goal. It had to be him to put it in, right? The rebound. Went over the line, goal line technology. And it was like, okay, Argentina, they got 12 minutes to hold on to this. And these guys had to, I, I don't get it. 
Mbappe with the shot. Gonzalo Montiel stretches his arms out like a chicken, right? I don't know what you're thinking. If you're going to jump, jump with your hands to your side. He makes himself bigger. The ref point to the spot. I got to commend the ref, though. I think he had a good game. I think they picked the right ref, the Polish ref, and he had a good game. He, he let the game flow. He made some solid decisions. Not many controversial decisions, in my opinion. I know some people won't agree. Some people may have their own thing there. They may say the referee was poor. And Mbappe stepping up to score that penalty, you know, to complete a hat trick, bro. A hat trick. First player to do that since Jeff Hurst since 1966. Yep. Right? Yep. And this is amazing. 23 years old. His 12th World Cup goal. Eight at the tournament. Let this sink in. Cristiano Ronaldo has eight World Cup goals in five World Cups. Mbappe scored eight in one. He scored eight and one. It's twelve in total. He's he's easily going to break Miroslav Klose's record. Easy, easily. Easy. And it, it, it could be as soon as USA twenty twenty six. And so. he might actually go over, make make double it up twenty five maybe. You Who knows? I, mean? I want to make a quick comment on Argentina's third goal. Mm -hmm. Man, that had all the the drama. You have an extra time goal. A lot, in large part against the run of play because when extra time began, France still had maintained most of the momentum. Um, and then it looked like I thought it was going to get called back for offside. Just like, remember that like that 10, 15 second pause where yeah. they, stopped, they stopped celebrating and everyone was like, what's going on? Is it, it going to be given? Is it going to be given? And then it was given. It was clean. It was clean. Messy again in the in, 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 with that pass though. When it, when it, bro, the pass, the, this guy's the past you see and that is why i don't care what nobody want to say bro um the messy cristiano ronaldo debate for me is over it's, it's over it is over and it's been over for a while because messi he just offers more the passing ability the presence the respect that he he, he commands right not demand but commands the goal scoring ability but it's the passing though it's the it's the it's the, the selflessness of of the man that these these passes so many memorable passes during this world cup and that one was another one you see what i mean his and, his reading of the game is is something like i am like i have never seen before bro you know what I, was, I actually, right, I, I was watching, um, I was on Reddit, and they were they were showing back some old videos of Ronaldinho and Messi. And people, some people may not understand why Ronaldinho was actually there supporting Argentina the other day, or Messi. It's because of the bond these guys had. Imagine when you were at your height, Ronaldinho, winning a Ballon d'Or and everything, winning a World Cup with Brazil. And you're at Barcelona after. And there's this kid that you see from the academy. And you like this kid. You see what I'm saying? Mm. You see something special in this kid. You're in training. This kid is there. He's, you know, doing a little juggling with you. Bam, bam, bam. You're showing him some things. And you fast forward to 2022. And he's... Still at the height, 35 years old. Back then, he was probably like six, 15, 16. It's just amazing. Where the he had this, this, this kid, and I'm watching the kid, I'm watching Messi as a kid, and I'm like, nah, man, this cannot, this was not taught. No one taught him this. No, no, no one taught him. He just, it was just in him. It was just in him. Something special. It, it's just that special talent. I think Messi was dropped off here by aliens, personally. It, bro, it's 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 insane. It is insane. It's it's nuts. You go back and look at the old footage where he's at La Masia Academy, and it, it just looks totally unreal. And this is the culmination of this the uniqueness and the specialness of, of him as a player. And he caps this off by finally winning the biggest prize in football. And he's won everything now. And did you see when Montiel's penalty went in? Messi. Yeah, yeah. Collapsed. He dropped. He you you could tell in that moment the weight of the world lifted off his shoulders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And <laughs> just before we go go forward, France almost won this 4-3. Kolomuani. Yeah. Kolomuani saved the, the save that Emmy Martinez made, made, right? And just to go back to how life is life is so funny, bro. Life is so funny. And everything has a knock-on effect. Every single thing has a knock-on effect, right? Everything. Me coming downstairs, doing this with you, it has a knock-on effect. Because what if I had said, you know what? Let me go outside and, and buy something. And I could have gone outside and something happened, right? I could have flipped some. Somebody could have, you know, did some bad driving, I could have flipped him off. We could have got into a little argument on the street. Then they 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 heated in their rage. They could have drove down and they could have went down the street and got into an accident because they're not paying attention or something. And then that in turn affects their family. You see what I mean? Yeah. Sure. Everything. And just to say that, it goes back to Emmy Martinez. And if I don't know if you was on Twitter, you saw Neil Mupay was actually trending. Neil Mupay injured Burnt Leno in a Brighton Arsenal game, and that gave Emmy Martinez the opportunity to rise to where he's at today. And Emmy Martinez came in at, as Arsenal's backup goalkeeper, and he was great. He was magnificent. He was out on loan for some years. He's been around the Arsenal team for some time. He didn't get the opportunity. And then that was his opportunity. That was his opportunity. He took it, got the move to Aston Villa. He's been great ever since. Won the Copa America and won the freaking World Cup. If that was Franco Armani in goal, they don't win this game. No. They probably don't get this far. So when I say everything has a knock-on effect, everything got a knock-on effect. And I got to learn that Neil Mopé is also half French and half Argentinian. Wow. Which is nuts. You see what I mean? Of course. You know, and every bro, if Kula Muani had scored that goal today, he would have probably already got a move to Bayern Munich lined up. Yeah, it wasn't it was in the, the final minute of, of uh extra it's time. Not, it was like, in stoppage and, time. And I'm not saying that Kula Muani won't get a big move in the future, but bro, I'm telling you, things man, Emmy Martinez, we talking messy. We're talking Messi. Messi was great. But other other people needed to put their hands up. Other players. And Emi Martinez is one of them who put his hands up. Yes. The save against Australia, Garan Kuol, that was going in. You yes. see what I'm saying? Yeah. He, 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 look, he stopped Garan Kuol from being a hero. <laughs> he basically. Because what could have happened after that, we don't know. You see what I mean? The we penalty also... saves in, in that Netherlands game. You see what I mean? And, and some of the big saves he made in the tournament. And then the save he made in the shootout. Emmy Martinez, and I think that is why when he got Golden Glove, he, he, he did that, you know? He did that gesture. Did you see what he did? I, I didn't. I, 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 I saw the award ceremony, but I missed mm. that part. What did he do? Yeah, he actually um put the the trophy by his nuts and he was like dancing. <laughs> so he's basically saying f you to all the haters. Well, he's known for uh being animated in his uh his celebrations. He did, he did the same thing um in in the Netherlands match, I think, yep, when he yep. saved those penalties. He was like doing gestures towards the the, the, the Dutch bench. Yep. Yeah. That the last minute it was stoppage time of extra time after Kula uh effort was saved by Emmy. Um, it was just seconds later at the under, at the other end, uh, other end of the pitch. Lautaro Martinez had an opportunity to steal a late goal for Argentina. Remember, he put his header wide. He and put there, his was, there, there was another opportunity to um, who was that that hit that was Messi. You remember that Messi shot. Before, before that Lloris uh, saved. Yep. Oh my God! Before extra time, yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, my, bro, if that had gone in, screaming. Yo, at the end <laughs> of it, look, I'm not gonna say it was the best final, but it, it it came to life. It definitely came to life, man. Cause we went from two goals to having six goals and a penalty shootout. 
and the freaking shootout though. So um, in terms of the shootout, France, man, flecked up, you know. Penalty shootout. Mbappe went up first. Messi went up first. You think, you know, big, big, big of those players to um, go up first, you know, set the pace. That yeah. Kingsley Coleman penalty wasn't a bad penalty. It's just that um, Emmy Martinez, he he guessed the right way. That ball hit him in his face, I think, or in his chest somewhere. Yeah, and then Chuameni, I think he grazed the right-hand post. Yeah, Chuameni went. went. When Chuameni's penalty went wide, when I was actually watching a shootout, I actually said, I actually said, go. And then I was like, I, I was like in between all three celebrations. I said, go, no, miss, whoa, wide. I was like, because the way it happened, I, it, 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 it looked like it was going in. The keeper went the wrong way, but it went wide. I'm like, wow, that, that's going to haunt. That's going to haunt these players. That is going to haunt these players, though. And you yeah. you you got to give it to the the Argentinian players for holding their nerve and to put it a, put, to put away all their penalties, especially Gonz, Gonzalo Montiel. How ironic that he gave away the penalty to yep. take the game to a penalty and then <laughs> scored the winning penalty. So I figure he's the one who said, "I'm taking a penalty. I don't care. I'm taking a penalty." That was big. If he did that, that was actually huge. Another criticism I gotta I gotta give for Loris, bro. Bro, you got to stop something. You see what I'm saying? You got to do something. This is where your team needs you the most. I know it's harsh, but Emmy Martinez stopped one. You got to stop a penalty at least. Give your team a chance. He didn't. Yeah. Uh, from, from Argentina's perspective, I was worried uh, that Lautaro Martinez was going to take a spot kick because when, when extra time ended, and I tweeted this out, I said he, this, he can't be allowed to take one. Give it I up know. to Debala though. Debala. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean he's he's had very limited time in this World Cup too. Yeah, probably. but he 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 came, he did and he, and he came up, know? but yeah, he, he came up in a big way. Um but <clears throat> yeah, Latara Latara lost a lot of points here though for this World mm. Cup. Yeah, for sure. Didn't find the back of the net even once. Um squandered those opportunities late on. And I mean, you got to give Mbappe a lot of credit. He's he needed three penalties in a World Cup final: those two goals, and then one here in the shootout. Yeah, I and mean, technically, I could this, cause since he now equals Jeff Hurst's in a hat trick in a, a World Cup, he's the first player in history to find the back of the net four times in a in a, in a World Cup final. Yeah. Um. So you could tell. I mean, you saw during the awards ceremony, he was not having it. He was getting the gold, the golden boot, but he was just like had a big grimace on his face he was upset yeah i think you know he was upset of course but deep uh -huh. down i think he's okay with it because he's he won it in 2018 and he's only 23 and he won the golden boot you think think about it he got a silver medal he he, he know he could go again four years later so it would not have been as bad as if like messi came in second because if that was the case that would have been more devastating oh don't for me, sure yeah don't get me wrong it is devastating but there's probably just one player in the french team right now and maybe like jordan very tooth you think that doesn't really have a chance maybe to win another one four years from now but all the other players they either won one already or they like you know what I'm saying? They could win. They could. They could come back four years. I know. I know it'd be disappointing, but still. Of course, yeah. You lose a World Cup final; it's always heartbreaking, especially on penalties. That's why when the match went to penalties, I thought to myself, "Ah, oh, this is gonna suck for whoever doesn't come out on the right side of this." It's the worst way to lose a World Cup final, in my opinion. Um, worst way to lose any freaking game, if you ask me. For sure, and. um yeah, for Argentina, it was it was going to be bad. Like to, to relent the two goal lead, dominating the way they were, giving up a lead again in extra time when it looked like they had redeemed themselves. Exactly. This the scenes from that would have been would have been devastating. And I gotta say, the post match celebrations. Do you know this? I've been watching World Cups since 1998. This was the first one I can recall. Every single Argentina player was in tears. Did you see that? 
yeah, everyone cried and you know I I I after the game I was live, so I switched off a bit, but I saw the emotion and then I switched back on. I watched the, the rest of the celebration. And I gotta look, I know we've been talking about the game, the players and all. I gotta commend Qatar though. They did a mm-hmm. great job hosting the tournament, in my opinion. And I mentioned this in my live stream that at least every single person at the stadium would remember what happened today because they were all sober. (laughs) See what I'm saying? Yeah. They were all sober. They will live in their memory. They won't be like, bro, I was there, but I can't remember a thing. I was drunk. Everyone would remember this. And Qatar hosted a great World Cup. I like the light show at the end. You know what I mean? The the whole touch of them Mm -hmm. on that the World Cup logo. You know, Messi being given that robe which is called a, a bitch, I think, something like that, I read. Mm-hmm. And him giving that robe to, you know, it's like, what, 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 did, I, what did it say? I can't remember what it says, but um, it says um, it says something about the, the, the kind of robe he was given. I can't remember, but it's something like that. So it was a nice touch. So give it up to Qatardo for hosting. I forgot, for sometimes, I forgot the World Cup was actually hosted by Qatar sometimes. You see, because they got knocked out like so early. But I got to give it to them. They, they did a, a great job hosting the World Cup. And they will be hosting a few more tournaments. The Asian Cup, the next one, 2024, they will be hosting that one. And yeah. maybe some tournaments in the future. So give it up to Qatar. But look, one thing I got to mention, though, before I forget, we've been talking for over half hour. And it's like it's like so many things to talk about. We're touching a lot of things, but I don't want to forget to mention these things. Some players. Otamendi. We criticize him a lot, but he was pretty good for the most part for Argentina. And he made a little Instagram video. And another player I got to mention that was massive, instrumental, Rodrigo De Paul. Because without him being the enforcer in the midfield, they don't get this far. No. And he said, he said, um, in the little Instagram video of um, that him and um, Otamendi was making. He actually crashed Otamendi's Instagram video. And he's like saying in Spanish, he's like saying, all of you guys who doubted me, you know, SMD, SMD. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's basically what he's saying. And I, and I feel him because I'm pretty sure when he was playing for Udinese all those years, he, he basically just came out of nowhere. You see what I mean? He, I remember using this guy in FIFA career mode, him, Rodrigo De Paul, and bam, I was like, oh, wow. Atletico finally found this guy. And look at that, man. This is nuts. This is nuts. So those two players deserves a lot of credits. A player that we haven't mentioned, Enzo Fernandez, young player of the tournament, well-deserved. Well deserved. Oh, sure. Since he came in in the midfield after the first the loss to Saudi Arabia, ah, uh, and oh, you, I, I think you mentioned as well, first team since Spain to win the World Cup after losing their first game. Yep. So Enzo came in and best young player of the tournament, richly deserves it, and he got a bright future. Perfect launch in Pan in Benfica, and he's gonna go on to do big things. I just hope he doesn't sign for Liverpool though. I've been seeing the links. Don't sign for Liverpool, bro. You know what I mean? Perfect, perfect signing for Manchester City. And the reason why I'm telling you this, right? Perfect signing for Manchester City because, right, we have a player by the name of Ilkay Gundogan, and he's at the age where the transition is perfect, and both players are of the same ilk. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So Enzo coming in, similar player to Gundogan. Perfect transition. Get it done, Pep. Get it done. Don't make Liverpool beat you to that signing, man. Don't screw this up, for sure. I mean, <laughs> man, we're still going to be digesting this this uh, this match for the, like, internally for the next few days. And, I um, know, man. I know. Anything else? We'll anything else that we have to talk about when it comes to this game, man? Anything else? We, we talked about the Shams. We talked about Scaloni. We mentioned the players, Emmy Martinez, guys, you know, give it up to Molina, Christian Romero, Tagliafico, you know, Macalista had a big role. Julian Alvarez, yeah, my boy, had a good, big role. We spoke Di Maria. We talk up Lionel Messi. And to talk Lionel Messi, 
when does he retire? That's the thing. I mean, it's it's it, he's free now. It's really his call. If you if he were to do it now, maybe retire, maybe have like a, a send off game. You could hardly blame him because you you this is the highest a, a player can reach. Uh, but he could continue to play on because, like you said earlier, he um, he might want to go on the pitch with that third star on his shirt. Yeah, and. And maybe I mean if it's it's up to him. I think no matter what he chooses, he'll have a lot of support and love from fans. Maybe he'll actually retire at the 2024 Copa America, which is looking like it's going to be hosted in the United States. Yeah. I mean, it would be fitting because it's looking like we're gonna host like we did in the 2016 Centenario. Yeah. So he could retire there and then when he's done, go to Inter Miami. He'd be right there in the MLS. That is true. That is true. So um, but when's he going to retire? I mean, he could start. Call. He could start taking some English lessons already. You see what I'm I sure. mean? But the thing is, right about Messi, he's 35, right? Mm -hmm. Lionel Messi. Let, let, let's just click on Messi right here. Messi, he's 35. He's born in June, right? June 24th. So next year he's 36. That's 2023. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he surely does not play until 39. He, he does not play the, the 2026 World Cup. No, he's done. I can't, I can't see that. He could do it because technically Cristiano Ronaldo is how old? I think he's 37 right now. Is Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo 37 or 39? He's 37. Oh, Cristiano Ronaldo, is, I thought he was a bit older than that. <laughs> He's a couple years wow. old. He's only 37. He's gonna be 38. So yeah, I don't see I don't see Messi playing on until he's 39. But you never know. You, you never, never know, know because if he is still fit, he's aging very nicely. If he's still fit, you know, um, I won't count it out, but I don't see it happening. I don't count it out, but I could see him I could see him playing at this level. Up to 2024, maybe he can, maybe he can add to his 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 trophy case and maybe help Argentina win another Copa America. You never know. Yeah, um, 30, 30, Well, in 2023, he's gonna be. Yeah, he could play until he's 37. 37, mm -hmm. you know, at the Copa America, win the Copa America, and retire. That'll be good. Even if he win or lose, that'll be good for him. But don't go beyond 37. And like tarnish your your legacy, you know what I'm saying? If you want to go yeah. and play a little MLS and set up a you know what I mean a retirement fund of some sort, I don't think he needs that. He is he's rich, but if you want to just say, all right, this is my retirement fund, going to play for Inter Miami, and then retire after that, that's fine. But mm -hmm. his legacy, it's it's complete now. It's basically complete. He doesn't need to win anything else. You see what I mean? He's done it all. He's definitely done it all. But the thing is, right, you know what got me thinking? What? What does Argentina do after he leaves? Who steps up and become that talismanic player? Good question, man, because I I, I don't know. It's going to be one of the biggest narratives of this World Cup for Argentina was was – always what are they going to look like in the post messi era how do they adjust um i don't know who's it going to be but i will say given the support that messi's had in this tournament from guys like alvarez and fernandez um some quality players here exactly and the, and this, the other thing too right you know just a, just another fifa reference in career mode whenever a legendary player retires there's a regen that comes into the game that's just as good as that player and in history we've seen that we've seen it because i think julian alvarez is like uh aguero region right mm -hmm. as soon as aguero faded it 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 left an opening for players like julian alvarez to come and shine right because a few years ago these players were playing up to this year, Julian Alvarez has played in South America in, in Argentinian football for River Plate, right? 
and yeah. it, this is a meteoric rise. And it's the same year that Sergio Aguero goes out and stops playing. You see what I'm saying? So imagine if Aguero was still around, he would have maybe taken up some of the, the, the opportunities that Julian Alvarez would have had. You, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So with Messi leaving, I think there'll be another player come through because we've seen it in the past. There was a there was a player by the name of Mario Kempes. There was players by the name of um, Diego Maradona, yep. Gabriel Batistuta, and after those guys left, what happened? You have Messi. Sure. You have Di Maria. You have a lot of guys that came through. Some of them not living up to expectations. You remember that guy Javier Saviola? Oh my yes. God! I look. Yep. He was supposed to be. Big as well, but kind of fell off. But I think they'll they'll have they'll have I, I you know there's a young player in the team by the name of Tiago Almada that plays for Atlanta United. Yep. Last, yep. He is very good, and I thought he would have been a player that could come up and replace a Messi. So I would have liked to see him get more opportunities at the World Cup, but he will get more opportunities going forward because it was a big call to bring him into the national team. After a few players like Los Celso and Co. got injured. So maybe maybe it's Tiago Almada. Maybe that's the messy waiting, you know, to rise from the, the, the MLS. You see what I mean? We'll see, man. The, the beautiful thing about this sport is that it moves on. Time just does not discriminate. And um it it keeps moving. It keeps moving and and, and change happens. And you know, Argentina's always I think Argentina's always going to be a powerhouse in the sport, certainly. Winning this World Cup today adds that on for many, many, many more years to come. Um, but yeah, I mean, th there's a lot of there's a lot of hope. There's a lot of promise. And so to 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 move on, we have to land the plane on the final, and then we're gonna talk briefly about the third place match. Not super super long, but we'll talk briefly. Mm -hmm. France. We got to well, land on France. Sure. Mbappe is going to be around. They have a oh. few too many. Kamavinga. <laughs> you know, Kunde. All these guys will be around. There's quality goalkeepers like Mike Mignon and, you know, Alphonse Ariola, Alban Lafont. All these guys waiting to take over from Loris. You see? And the French team, they, they'll, they'll be good going forward. Do you think Deschamps stay on as head coach? That's a good question. I think he will. I think he's going to stay until Euro 2024. Um, that'll be the next step for them to try to break through because they haven't won the Euros. They've won the World Cup. They almost got close to winning it again today. Um, but for France, as far as like their future, look, I'm going to say this right now. Kai Mbappe is going to be in a World Cup final again one day. France is the national team in the world I am the least worried about because even though they wanted to win today, sure, they didn't need to. You see, this is a team that got a penalty shootout away from winning the world back-to-back -back World Cups while missing players yep. entering this tournament. I think maybe only Brazil, even then it's debatable, is a country that produces as much talent at a rapid pace as France. It's, it's France and Brazil are the top two for me in terms of production of quality um, in the last couple of decades. Well, Brazil for forever. Um, so they're going to be fine. France have an, an absurd wealth of, 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 of uh, quality to lean back on. And, you know, they won the World Cup in second gear back in 2018. Um, they almost won it with not looking their, their best this time around. France are going to be fine, man. I wouldn't be surprised if France reached like two of the next four finals. <laughs> what, are, what, are your, what are your thoughts on the, the African All-Stars or Africa United tag that they've got? The what? Africa United. You have African, to African All-Stars, France. Oh, they're African like players? African All Stars. Do you know at one time, at the end of the game, Hugo Lloris was the only non African player on the field for France? Oh my God, you're right. Yeah. 
Hugo Yang. Lloris. Hugo Lloris. Uh, that was absolutely nuts when you yeah. think about it. And even when Varane went off, Varane is like from Martinique, right? When he went off, when he went off, all the players except for Lloris was of African descent. Even That's Mbappe, we know Cameroon and Algeria. Mm -hmm. Everyone else. Nuts. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, France gets. Uh, France has like a, a lot of, uh, well, because of history, right? Yeah. Uh, a lot of players that um, are African descent from like West Africa and Central Africa. And um, so it's a country that's not spoiled for uh, options for, 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 for talent. Um, so, I mean, I think you agree they're going to be fine. They will. And and Argentina, just to add, is on that total opposite of the spectrum where they do have a lot of Italian influence, but still their players are 100% most of the times Argentinian. But that sparked another debate. But another question before we move. Do you think an all-French team, pure French team, gets this far? Maybe, well, we gotta maybe. be careful here. What are we? What are we? What are we? What are we considering pure French here? Well, yeah, because even Loris is like Italian. I heard, um, f um Spanish. Got uh, Loris, the double L. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it, it, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know if France could. I don't know, bro. If they I don't could think put, so. Yeah, they they can't put together an all French team, but they they used to be very good in the eighties. You see what I'm saying? So. Maybe they can. Who With knows? Platini and yeah. Exactly. I mean, they probably get out of the group stage, but then I don't think they they go on a run to the final if it's all not with the current crop of players they have. No, it's, no. It's it, just it, even though Rabio and Griezmann deserve respect, they were really good this tournament. Um, but but yeah. Griezmann, I think they say is from um, is from Italy or something. The the the, the Griezmann, the the I think he's from Italy. <laughs> now wait is he from italy or is he a frenchman of the like, time? yeah for his people is from italy but look without mistake these guys from africa this african descent most of them are born in france so let's give them that but yeah. to, to talk about the game that most people didn't really pay, pay much attention to is the, the third place match let's just click on that and talk briefly about that third place match and I like to say um, congratulations to Croatia. And I want to say to Football Fair, I told you so. Yeah, you were right. Uh, I was very pleasantly surprised. Both of these teams went at it from the very beginning. And it, it shows that for, for, for countries that are not powerhouses in the sport, matches like this, even if they're consolation, they mean everything because it's a difference between a medal and not a medal. And yeah. um, we had two goals, two identical goals, actually. Yeah, in by Vardiel and Dari. In the like choppy free kicks, yeah. Um, in in the first ten minutes, and you were you were right when your your call for Croatia. My prediction was two two and Morocco on penalties, but um, man, Croatia, we have to we have to give a comment here because this team, get this, get this, <laughs> they've only advanced past the group stages three times since debuting in nineteen ninety eight. But every time they've done it, they've picked up a medal. This is their second, third place medal in the last 24 years. As we know, they were silver medalists four years ago. That's impressive. A country of four million people. Nuts. And everything else was were group stage exits or they didn't qualify for the tournament. So you have to say that's when they get out of the group, they're, they're, they're quite efficient. They're quite consistent. <laughs> and... Um... Croatia two Morocco one Vardiel seventh minute great great free kick I gotta say the routine Vardiel with the header one of their best players of the tournament he surely gets in the team of the tournament for me Ashraf Dari similar free kick off a Croatian head though headed in by Dari one one and a player that we both been calling for to get more game time Mislav Orsic the man listen. His numbers are ridiculous because I'm pretty sure he has about two to three assists. I think it's two assists and a goal and ton load of other opportunities. He's one of the most dangerous players. And I think the persistence with Perisic 
block this player from actually getting in the team more. And it's not until they actually switched to a back three that he he basically got into this team and he fitted fitted in nicely. That was a great goal, man. Oshich is something special, bro. We've been yeah, seeing yeah. this guy do a lot of big things for Dilmo Zagreb in the Champions League for, for over the last couple of seasons. And he's he's been doing it for Croatia. I, I'll make the call and say Mislav Oshich plays a big role in qualifying for the 2026 World Cup. And the Euros as well for Croatia. Yeah, for sure. And you know, he, he was given a starting role in this uh in this lineup here. And Vardiol, I mean, one of the best defenders of this entire tournament. It was nice to get him on the on the clean sheet. Uh on the score sheet rather. And I think going on from here. Where do you think Croatia goes from here as far as because because I was in the in the in the ceremony they were celebrating as if they won the World Cup. Yeah, it means a lot. It means a lot to place. You see what I mean? Because they now they now have three medals, two third place and a second place medal for a country of their stature. So it, it allows them to dream even more, right? And if you look at their squad, their squad is well poised for the next four years. Modric, of course, he's of the age where he'll move on. But Modric, I think, will stick around and help towards the 2026 World Cup. You see what I mean? Towards the, the next Nations League final. You can't write off Croatia in that one. You can't. No. And it would be, it would be very fitting. It would be very fitting if Croatia goes on and win that Nations League final. That would be, very, that would be a very good touch. And if we click on their, their schedule right here, we'll see the the Nations League. Where Where is that at? Well, it's not fitted in there yet, right? It's not in there yet. But the Nations League and their Euro qualifiers, their group is pretty easy. You see what I mean? So in terms of where do they go from here, all they need to do, beat up Wales and Turkey, and they're good, basically. Beat up Wales and Turkey, get good results at home, and they are good. And if we click on, um, if we just check briefly, UEFA Nations League. We check the UEFA Nations League, right? And we check the, the final four. We check the final four. Croatia, Italy, Spain, and Netherlands. Bro, this is winnable. This is winnable for Croatia. Yes, absolutely. And it would be very, the Nations League is significantly less arduous to, to to win than a world cup or a european championship it's just two games you got to get it right for two games and um i, I, I i'll say this right now. i i want them to win the nation's league because i they deserved it this it'll be a deserved. nice bro it will be like a nice sort of cherry on top of their their history you see yeah, what of i course. mean first yes of course uh, first ever trophy and they'll <laughs> celebrate that they'll celebrate that it well into the night bless you yeah blessings to croatia as well look it'll be nice it will be a nice touch for them they never won anything major that nations league will give them that that boost that they need because they have the players they got a young set of players shutalo he played in this game vardial stanisic lover maya you will want to take on the, the luka madrid mantle you know, you, you look at Arshic still got a good couple years left in him. Perisic got a few years left in him. You got Livia and Petkovic and Kramaric, Marj, um, um, Brozovic, not Marjic, but um, Kovacic. These guys have a lot of time left in them. And I was kind of disappointed that Vida didn't get a run out in this game, I got to say. I was surprised that Vida didn't play this game, though. Really surprised. You see yeah, what you, I mean? You 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 called that he was going to get a, a role here. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I thought he would have at least get a role off the bench, but that is how serious Croatia took this game. You see what I mean? Because if they wanted, they had. I think Croatia had one substitute available, and they didn't they didn't use it. You see what I mean? They only used four subs, four <laughs> subs. You see? But yeah. you gotta give it up to them. They went out there, they played with their heart, and they fought hard. They won the game. Well deserved, in my opinion. Not to take anything away from Morocco, because, excuse me, they could have won it. They could have taken it to extra time. You saw that chance Enesiri had at the end there. 
Oh yeah, yeah. In, in stoppage time, the yeah, header. The header. Yeah. Yep. He, he should have scored that. It would have been. It would have taken uh, two two, and my prediction might have come true. <laughs> yeah, that reminded me of that Enesari miss back in twenty eighteen World Cup, though. Similar. I think that um, from Morocco, though. I mean, they're still gonna they're still gonna be home as heroes. Indeed, because indeed. it would have been it would have been nice for them to get something like a medal, but. I mean, if you had told them they were going to have a semifinal finish before this World Cup, they would not believe you. Um, yeah, this, this was a big performance by Morocco, though. Um, I'm surprised that Amrabat started, but a lot of these guys are going to get big moves, especially Amrabat, Abouklal, you know, um, not Abouklal, but Onahi, pardon me. Maybe Abouklal, but... Amrabat and Onahi, they're gonna get some good moves. They're gonna they 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 their bank accounts are gonna look a lot better than they look right now. Let me just put it out there. This kid Al Kanus is only 18 years old, so they have things to look forward to for the future. Atia Allah, that left back, he's a good left back as well. So they have something to work on for the next four years for the 2026 World Cup. You know, give it up to Walid Regragri. And he's done a great job. But this team, they cannot relent. They cannot take their foot off the gas. They cannot relax because the moment mm. you relax, you miss the 2026 World Cup. You're going to miss it. You see and, what I mean? And never, I mean? and not just the 2026 World Cup. They need Morocco. The best thing they can do right now, build on this, make a strong case to win the AFCON in six months. That's yep. coming up. It's no. it's less than a year away. No, next year. Next year. Yes, six months. No, next next 2024. It's been moved. They moved the AFCON to 2024? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was 2023. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know. Well, we, I know. I know. We got a lot of tournaments it, next year. It's hard to keep track of it all. But anyway. Yeah. No, you were right. It was It was supposed to be six months but they moved it again for some reason I think weather again I think it was supposed to be in the ivory coast right yes it is in the ivory coast yeah they moved it to 2024 early 2024 so we're gonna have asian cup and the afghan early 2024 so yeah. but they have to they have to build on this momentum because this was this was good you see what i mean for sure you saw that you saw when Buffal made that that move that that really good dribble and went around like two Croatian players that, that was nasty. I don't know if you remember that, but give it up to Sofia and Buffal, man. He he's been really good. He looked good when he when he used to play in the Premier League at, for Southampton, but he just didn't have that end product. And we saw that from him at the World Cup too. If he has an end product, bro, he could be a. And I think you know even though. Morocco had a great tournament. I think ZH could have offered a little bit more. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Some of his last, some of his final touches were a little bit suspect. I felt. And his and his deliveries into the box were a bit suspect. And yeah. I think that's what I think that's what actually killed Morocco in the end. They didn't have that that killer instinct in the final third. You see? Think about yeah. it because if you go back to to a lot of their games. Look, they beat Belgium 2-0, substitute score. They didn't score against Croatia. They, they scored against Canada. Canada gifted Morocco two goals in that game, I have to say. They finished them. ZH scored, but it was errors. It was errors. We fast forward to the Spain game, no goals. And then all you had was that Dari goal and that um, Enesiri goal. So if I could remember all the goals that Morocco scored at the World Cup, they didn't score enough. They didn't score enough. And, and I think this is something that they could work on going forward. Ramp up the programs. Ramp up your scouting. Find that diamond in the rough, that, 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 that striker that comes out of nowhere. Continue going to the countries and finding players of Moroccan descent. Bring, call them up to the national team. You see what I mean? You gotta do this. You got you gotta do that. Yeah. Because oh, and I did read something right, off topic, but similar. Mbappe's dad had actually 
approach Cameroon for Mbappe to play for Cameroon. Wow. And the Cameroonian FA demanded a sum of money. And at the time, Kylian Mbappe's dad said he couldn't afford that type of money. And he could have played for France for free. So why not? You see what I mean? So think about some of the talent that African, the African teams missed out on. And, and I don't know if you realize, the African teams end up with these players either because the player wants to play for that, for that team. When you think Hakimi, Hakimi could have played for Spain. Spain wanted Hakimi. Ezul, um, Ezul, El Ezal Zuli, Spain wanted him too. He chose Morocco. But a lot of times, I feel like the players are going to play for these African teams as a last resort. You see what I mean? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, of course. Because like most the last of the... resort, they can't get into the, the other team where they're from and they, they go to play for the team in Africa. Because unfortunately, the, the, the reality of, this, of the situation is that m most of the glory is to be had with the, the, the big European sides, both at a international and club level. Exactly. But just to brush up really quickly, um, even though I was, you know, I kind of wanted Morocco to win, I'm glad that Croatia did because I thought they were the better team overall. Like, yeah, they, they were, they were. But on the field play today and uh, uh, yesterday in that game, I don't think it was particularly close. I think Croatia were dominant for large stretches of it. And so, you know, Croatia, it's deserved. I mean, they were the but, third best team. But you got to give Morocco a lot of credit for never giving up and staying in the game and stay fighting. And you got to give it to both the teams that even though they lost the semis, they, they turned up, they played with a lot of energy, played with a lot of spirit, and they finished off their World Cup campaign. They still got to play seven games like the finalists. So give it up to Croatia for coming up, coming in third. And, of course, Morocco for placing fourth. It's a big achievement. It's history. Morocco, Morocco won. Morocco and now looked as looked at as the best team in Africa. Well, first they have to be. Basically, it's either them or Senegal for sure. But Senegal, it's Morocco. Forget about the Afcon. Morocco are now the team to beat in Africa. Morocco. So give yeah, it up to right. the Atlas Lions. They did a great job and brilliant World Cup. If it wasn't for Morocco and Croatia, I, I believe this would have been a very boring, very, very boring World Cup. You know, so give it up to these teams for pulling off the upsets that they did, knocking out Brazil for Croatia, Spain and Portugal, Belgium for Morocco. And this is the second meeting between these teams at the World Cup as well. So it was a much better game than the first one. It all came full circle. And that's where we're going to come full circle right now and land the plane. It's been our longest episode, an hour plus, but it's fitting. It's fitting. It's our last episode during the World Cup. It's done. And any episode going forward would be after the 2022 World Cup, building up towards the 2026 and the tournaments in between. Right? So mm -hmm. I know you're looking forward to these episodes, man. Oh, yeah, for sure. I can't wait. And it, I feel a little bit sad because whatever post guys who are watching this post World Cup hangover is real and it's going to be hitting us in, the, in this upcoming week. I felt weird after Russia 2018. Even when I was doing the award videos, I was like, oh, no more World Cup action. But life goes on. Football goes on. We still have a lot of content related to this World Cup that, that Dom and I will dive into in the next few days when we assess how some teams and how regions did. Um, and we also have a lot more content for you coming up um, uh, re regarding future tournaments. So World Cup Digest will always keep going on. And like we said, this is a, a, a project of ours. We're turning this into a marathon. Exactly. Something I forgot to mention before we go, the awards, you know, best young player, Enzo Fernandez. Messi winning the golden ball. Congrats to Messi. Emmy Martinez, the golden glove, and Kylian Mbappe, the golden boot for scoring the most goals. I know we spoke about these players, but we did mention Messi winning that, that trophy for the best player, his second one. And I did have to mention, too, 
Messi could he he has one World Cup in five tries. But yep. if you go back and you go back retroact retroactively and you look at Argentina's performances, 06, 10, 14, 18, he could have won more World Cups. Oh, oh yeah, for, 2014 was there. Um, I remember Di Maria missed that final. He wasn't able to play. Imagine how much that would have changed the complexion. Exactly. Of course, eight. Um, there was also, you know, 2006 when Jose Peckerman was in charge. I don't know if you remember this, but uh, one of the big reasons they didn't win that World Cup um, was he, he didn't sub on Messi in that quarterfinal against Germany. He brought on this guy, Cruz, and it was like, it was a, it was a flop. It was like a huge like tactical. No, I didn't, I didn't remember that. That is something that we got to dive into in the future. It's considered like where Argentina lost that match because they were in control of that game against the host nation Germany. And then Germany came back late on with that equalizer from Closa. Um, but yeah, no, like Messi not getting on the on the field for that match was considered. Like let's give him. Let's give Peckham a break. He didn't know. He didn't know. He didn't know he had a legend on his team. Exactly. He <laughs> didn't know. He didn't know, man. He, he really right. didn't know. And then 2010, when Maradona was in charge, it looked like for a time they were really going to challenge for the title, and then they just got lambasted by Germany. Who they Germany seemed... stood in their way. So they yeah. have to thank, you know, um, they have to thank, let's say, Costa Rica, Japan, Spain for keeping Germany at bay because – and in 2018 as well, they avoided Germany, still, did, but couldn't get past France. So another thing too, they got their revenge against France from their 2018 loss. So I yes. think that is where we land the plane. We touched on almost everything that we could have touched on, guys. If you have anything else to add, please leave it in the chat. Karen Benzema did not play the final as well, like we thought he would have made a quick appearance out of the blue, <laughs> but he didn't. But um, it was it was a great World Cup, man. I, I had a lot of fun, and this will be the last video that we do after well during the World Cup because it's still the day of the World Cup, even though Jules Kunde and Co op having nightmares right now of Angel Di Maria. You know what I mean, Coman and. Too many. They're having nightmares. They, they're having cold sweats right now, missing their penalties. It's probably a new day for them, but it's still the same day for us. Yeah, but, I mean, if I'm a player and I miss a penalty in a World Cup final, I'm I'm gonna be crying. I I, I, I will I will cry. I, I'm I not, know, I'm, man. That would be hard. And but mm -hmm. you no, know, no. It's just the World Cup is amazing, man. I'm glad. We don't that, even want to say goodbye. We don't want to say goodbye to the World Cup, but. Football Pharaoh, take it away, bro. Episode 27, it was epic. It was great. But we, 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 we got to land the plane right now. And we got to get to um, baggage claim and go home to our families. So yeah, take it away. For sure. And uh, we will, we'll keep talking about this World Cup the next few days. Um, but the action, of course, is now gone. It's just now about analyzing the debris. Um, it's been a great month, guys. Thank you for joining us. And we hope that you enjoyed this World Cup. It went by in a blink of an eye, but then again, so do most World Cups. And it was a privilege for, you to, for us to be here with you this entire time. And we hope you still stay with us as we deliver much, much more content. And oh, we're going to miss the World Cup. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but... It'll be but, back, bro. It'll be back because it's the same thing. Twenty eighteen, we 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 did a couple of collabs, and by the time you blink, that four years went by so fast, and we're still here, bro. So twenty twenty six, we yep. we hoping to build the project up, make ton load of content, and hopefully we're still around. And we will, you know, God willing, we will. So guys, leave a comment below, like, subscribe to his channel if you haven't already. You can find me on my YouTube channel, link in the description box below. You can also find me on Twitter, uh, football pharaoh at soccer pharaoh. That's at soccer underscore pharaoh. I'm going to be tweeting a lot of things, I think, in the next few days when I dive into some stats. Um, the World Cup is magnificent. It's the greatest sporting event of all time. It's one of our favorite things of all yep. time. And we are, we are so thankful for you guys to have been here with us. And we'll see you guys soon. Until then. 
Have a good one. Much love and peace out. Peace.